Well, welcome back. Eight minutes to seven is the time. You all know him as the Fonz from the hit American TV show Happy Days, first shown an incredible 35 years ago. Well, since then, Henry Winkler has gone on to be a producer, a director, and author. The one thing you may not know about him is that he has dyslexia, and he's back in the UK fronting a new campaign to raise awareness about that learning difficulty. Theo Piscalatus has more. Happy Days star Henry Winkler has spent the last 10 years sharing his own story, explaining what it was like to grow up with dyslexia. Undiagnosed for 30 years, the actor is passionate about using his own experiences to highlight the problems of learning difficulties. Now the government is joining forces with him. Children can have special educational needs and still, you know, achieve and do good things and great things with their lives. So it's about raising that self-esteem and being very positive about the contribution all children can make. Around one in five children has special educational needs and many can end up feeling isolated and alone. Their self-esteem becomes low, their confidence is low, then they're more likely to be bullied. We know this from the evidence and that's really why this campaign is so key. By taking the campaign to thousands of schools across the UK, the main message campaigners want to spread is that children can learn in different ways. Dyslexia is widespread, but above all, they say it's normal. Well, as you can see, we're joined by the man himself, Henry Winkler, uh, right now. Thanks Good morning. Steve. Good morning to you. So, all the time you were the, fo the fond, you were dyslexic? Yes, I was. Uh, I was dyslexic from, you know, from birth because it's hereditary. Yes. So. Uh, I didn't know until my stepson, Jed, who just had a baby girl, as a matter of fact, I'm a grandfather, my, my wife and I are grandparents for the first time, but until he was in the third grade, Jed was in the third grade, and he was tested, I had no idea, I just thought I was stupid. I was told I was stupid, and I believed it. And you grew up with your entire childhood thinking you, you were slow, having difficulty. Yes. Learning. You couldn't even, that famous Harley Davidson, I'm told, you couldn't actually ride that I because of your figure condition. Out. Now explain why dyslexia makes it, you unable to ride a motorbike. The, it was the left, the right. I couldn't figure out the coordination between the gas, the brake, the, the clutch down here, the, and, uh, and so I was just pulled on a, a, a plank of wood on four rubber wheels. So all that was fake. <laughs> Didn't I look great? <laughs> Oh, you shattered the illusion, but nevertheless, in a very good cause. Yes. And what about reading scripts and writing? Of course? Very difficult. And what I found was that uh, if you want something bad enough, you figure out a way to, to get it. Mm. You know, children are enormously talented, and they don't necessarily have to be great in math mm. in order to um, create and give a gift to the world. But you, like most kids, I suspect, certainly of your generation, must have been embarrassed by this and probably told Fibs to, to, to hide the fact, well, you didn't even know what was wrong with you, but you, to hide the fact that you knew there was something wrong, exactly maybe you couldn't right. put a name on it. I define dyslexia this way. I spent a third of my time trying to figure out school. I spent a third of my time trying to figure out why I couldn't figure it out. And I spent a third of my time covering up my shame and humiliation. Because believe me, you know, a teacher who says to a nine-year-old, uh, I just met this fabulous young lady in Liverpool where I, I did a, a pantomime, and the teacher said, oh, at your age, you should know this already. Mm. Never taking into account that her mind works differently. Yeah. And this campaign, you know, you were holding up the newspapers. This is First News, yeah. which is the newspaper for children, yeah. sometimes written by children. And they have started with the teaching awards, the uh, Dyslexic so so uh, Society of England, and Mrs. Brown, uh, they have started this campaign called My Way. Every child can succeed in their way. And that's what you're helping well, them with. It is so important yeah. now. So is, there a, so is there a solution to this? Then? There for, is. For when you talk about how... I think the solution is just a refocusing on how we teach our children. Not just in Britain, my country, in America, exactly the same problem. The fact is, I, I'm, I saw this young man, 16 years old. He was allergic to school. He couldn't sit still. He couldn't, he couldn't compute what was going on. Yeah. They took him out of the class two days and put him in a vocational setting. He rode his little Honda home, and while he was riding his Honda, he said, that wall that I just put up, the drywall, didn't exist before I did it. I'm good. Yeah. I could have my own company. I'm good at this. It's about confidence. Yeah. And and it's confidence and the prejudice between uh intellect and vocation. Okay, so well, you're going to so talk later about this later on. It's a problem I know that yeah. affects thousands of families up and yeah. down the country. And great that you're on board with that campaign. Thank you. Lovely to meet you. Fantastic. Thank you. And yeah. if you think uh, you might be dyslexic, you can find advice and take our test on our website, gm.tv.
Before all that, though, I am delighted to be joined by Henry Winkler. He's fronting a new government campaign to raise awareness of dyslexia in schools, and you'll be heading off to number 10 today, won't yes. you? Yes. It's fantastic. Um, uh, Mrs. Brown, Sarah Brown, uh, invited uh, Ed Balls, our, the Minister of Education, Walker Books, First News, the uh, newspaper for children, uh, the Teachers Awards, and the uh, Dyslexic uh, Society of uh, England to come and start My Way, My Way is the campaign. Right, so I mean obviously you're the perfect person to front this because you have dyslexia yourself. I do. Three kids have dyslexia. That's true. But you didn't get, you, you didn't know about that you had dyslexia until you were in your 30s, is That's that right? That's right. My, my stepson, Jed, was in the third grade, third year, and we had him tested because he was so verbal, so clever. And we kept saying, don't be so lazy. Go upstairs and do it again. Mm -hmm. You're too smart for this. And when we had him tested, everything that they said to him, I went, oh, my gosh, I've got something with a name. I'm not just right. stupid. So because when you were at school, people would say that you weren't, you weren't clever, but that's you right. were. You know, right. And, and you, you must have, that must have been so and difficult And that's the point, you. Lorraine, exactly what you just said. Children learn differently. Yeah. And every child has got something great in them. Mm. And there is a tremendous prejudice between intellect and the child who is really good at vocational. Mm. Do you know? Uh, I just saw, uh, met a, a young man, I think he's 16 and a half, and they took him out of class because he was almost allergic to school. Right. He just couldn't sit there. His brain wasn't computing, mm. but he was great at drywalling. Okay. And when he rode home, he thought to himself, that wall didn't exist this morning. I put that wall up, mm. and I'm good at it. Yeah. And then he said, I'm going to have my own business. I can do this. A society needs every citizen, every child, to be at the top of their potential. Yes, whatever that may be. Whatever that may be. And it doesn't matter. You know, <laughs> a, a society doesn't work on children who can recite Latin. No, indeed. No, no, where would we be without the people that can actually do things with their hands? Yes, can actually right. Work? But for but you, there's um, a prejudice. Uh, there absolutely is. And there must be as well in the acting world, because I guess you kind of hid the fact that you maybe were having difficulty learning lines or, or any of that. And I wonder how you actually managed to do your job. Was when it I did Happy Days, we would read at the table every Monday morning the new script. Right. And I had to get that script on Friday. I had to get something early to go over it and over it and over it mm. so that I would not make a complete um, fool of myself on Monday morning in front of everybody. I cannot read out loud. Right. So you had all these strategies, which I think people, when they're not diagnosed, right. they have to kind of have these coping strategies, don't right. they, so that but they can function. But before you can get the strategy, you have to have a self-image. Yeah. I truly have come to understand that self-image is the beginning and the end of living. And the parent has to help the child. Uh, I met two ladies last night um, from Buckinghamshire. Yep. Is that true? That's true. <laughs> and they are, their children are both um, uh, dyslexic. Right. And they are on the case of these children. They just support the children. They mm. support the school. And they help the teachers who are overwhelmed. Yes. Because a teacher has to teach the smartest kid in the class and the child who has the most trouble in the class, the same subject at the same rate. Mm. It's almost impossible to do. My way, this campaign of my way, is to make sure every child learns at their rate. How is that going to work, though, Henry? How is that going to work in schools, do you think? I truly believe it is merely a refocusing. It is just looking at how um, the structure of teaching is uh, is done reteaching the teacher do you know mm. um starting with it with the new teachers um starting brand new mm. so that children who learn at a different rate are not forced to compete with uh emma who is brilliant mm. you look at emma you know you know a child doesn't wake up in the morning and go i think i'm gonna fail today sure they look at Emma and they go, oh my God, or they look at Trevor and they go, oh my God, they're so good. I can't do that. I feel terrible about mm. myself. And they drift yeah. into oblivion. I know, it's really sad and hide at the back of the class. That's, that's and, really difficult. Yes. But if we get them early I enough, used humor. I, I yeah, was the class was clown. That right. That's how to deflect it. Really. And I was sent to the head teacher all the mm. time.
news. So this, this campaign launches today. Launches You're going today. to be at Downing Street. We um, really wish you all the best with it. It's a, it's a great Mrs. thing. Mrs. Brown invited us. Well, and, uh, you have to go if she invites you. And Ed Balls will be there. I saw Ed Balls in action with kids, um, I think about a year ago. We were at the same school. And this is a man who truly understands how to communicate. That's what with we need. Kids. We need more of that. Henry, thank you. I hope it goes really well. It's lovely thank to see you. I'm so happy Always to be a joy. Here. Always a joy. Thank, thank you. you. My so, way. So much. It should be My your way. way. It certainly should. Thank you very much indeed.